How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. This is an installment of Flashlight, but I'm doing things a little bit differently than I have in the past. Flashlight, for people who don't know, is a series all about Flash, animation, and all that here on the internet. The main focus of the series is usually about highlighting an artist, a particular video game or animation series in the past. This one is more of like animation as a general topic, so I'm doing it a bit different. There was a pretty major piece of news in the animation world the other day. The Sony animated music video that was recently released, something meant to showcase the diversity and creativity of the catalog of games that they have available on that console. And somewhat ironically, almost every bit of the animation featured in that was stolen. Not literally copy-paste, but totally traced over in a way that is just so blatantly obvious once people started to find the original sources. The director of this Sony animation was Kevin Bao, who has since been like wiped clean of the internet. You cannot find anything on this guy. Any formal contracts he ha held, uh, any business portfolios, anything like that, a Vimeo page, that shit is gone. No one wants anything to do with this guy. I think he is doing a little bit of personal damage control as well, like Instagram, all that stuff. He's just gone. Probably rightfully so. Immediately, I do want to be clear, people should not be mad at Sony or Alien Animation who contracted this stuff out. It all comes down to one guy who is like the creative art director of this project who just decided to be a lazy tool and trace over everyone else's art. It is this guy's fault. He defrauded these companies, he lied to them and presented himself as this capable artist, and then he just went on to steal a whole bunch of stuff. They have no real blame or accountability. When you see the sources that this guy stole from, it doesn't matter how much time they put into vetting this uh, a project or this guy, they were never going to catch these super specific examples. So I don't think we should place any blame on them. Like, they're as much a victim as the people who were stolen from. It's actually not known what agency this was. It's unlikely that a big company like Sony goes and contracts out one specific guy. They probably work with an umbrella agency who has people under them who can get assigned to this project. A lot of people have been pointing at Ilan. They worked with him back in 2017 and have not maintained a working relationship with the guy. Uh, I wouldn't blame the production company regardless, but they especially have no involvement with this. It's almost stunning how almost every single part of this is traced, and from how many different sources? I guess they thought that if they stitched together from as many different places as possible, then it would be less likely for people to catch short little sequences that were taken from specific sources. But guess what? When you're an animator and you spend weeks animating like a two and a half second segment, it's pretty drilled into your brain. People tend to notice. The abundance of ripped off scenes also just means there's that many more eyes who are likely to catch a specific instance. I don't know what this guy was thinking. I guess he was thinking I'm uh, a talentless hack and this is the only way I, I can do this. Maybe either get better or switch careers, dude. Now, there have been examples in the past I've seen kicked around on, on Twitter where people have ripped off uh, references of maybe like a live action fight sequence and then they kind of use that as a reference for animating their own. That's a whole other issue. There are people who legitimately make their own reference material, like Disney. There's tons of footage of them showing uh, people swishing around in dresses and stuff to get the movement of that just right. And that's totally legit. You're doing that in-house. You're doing it for yourself. Uh, but this, this concept of people borrowing from other sources like that is a little bit rocky. People tend to not be big fans of it. But I don't remember ever seeing an example where someone just ripped animation straight from animation and people from all over the industry, from every different angle, seem to collectively agree this was a shitty thing to do and there's not really any wiggle room for forgiveness. There are one in a thousand or, or less people saying like, ah, oh, whatever, it's just a reference or, or an homage. For the people saying that, I just have to assume that they have never animated anything in their life and have no idea the, the heart, soul, and sweat, blood, and tears that it takes to, to put that stuff to, to pen and paper, you know? And... Yeah, it's just not cool. There's no there's no moral gray area here. It was a bullshit thing that this guy did. As these accusations with the Sony reel were coming out, people went deeper into this guy's Vimeo and his, his back catalog. Turns out he's been ripping off things for years. It's always been small little snippets and never anything this large, this big of a commercial product. I mean, he obviously has some shred of talent. You can't just animate on a whim one day. Even if you trace it, it's gonna, it's gonna look like garbage. But rather than refining his technique and improving himself, he just decided to take uh, the short way and borderline illegal way and just downright shitty way. He's leveraging himself to these companies to appear to be a more competent artist than he actually is. 
the guy has won animation awards in the past. He had a, a great portfolio. He's worked with some pretty prolific clients. People who are coming in to this situation to work with this guy, they're not going to be aware of what they're getting into. There's a bit of a trend here that this shamefully Canadian actor primarily stole internationally. He's taking from French and, and Russian and Argentinian animators all for this finished product that is meant for a Japanese audience. My theory is that he thought if he stole from as many different sources as possible, none of which were Japanese, then they were less likely to, to catch on to what he was doing. Guess what, man? In the age of the internet, everything is international. Everyone's going to see everything. This story really seemed to break when the French animation website Katsuka started to cover it. They really started to assemble side-by-side -side comparisons and showcase as many of these ripoffs as possible. I had to go a little bit outside of that. Uh, other things that people had tweeted out and shared, but it was mostly the hard work of Katsuka that kind of got this, this story in the, in the public eye and, and put me onto it. So a huge thank you to them, in the spirit of giving credit where credit's due, for, for kind of the heavy lifting of originally bringing a lot of this forward. There's not much else to talk about in this story. This guy is an asshole. He stole from these artists, allegedly, but I mean, yes, allegedly. And Sony and like dozens of artists were the victims of it. Instead, I want the rest of this video to be not only a comparison of what was stolen, but to be a showcase for the artists who were taken from. This part of the reason I'm lumping this as a flashlight episode is that the series is really dedicated to showing off a talent. There are creators here who are robbed, who deserve your attention. Kevin is out there leeching their admiration off their hard work, and I want to try to direct some of that towards the people who truly earned it. Independent artists, freelancers, major studios, and students have all been equally ripped off. It's an unforgiving industry that demands long hours, unrealistic standards, inconsistent work, with limited exposure and pay. In a small effort to give back to these artists, I want to highlight some of their work going beyond what was stolen, and include as many links in the description as I can so people can go out and follow more of these artists. One of the wildest ones that seems to be one of the first that people actually caught on to is this stolen moment from the Steven Universe movie. This is maybe the most surprising one, because the movie is pretty damn recent. I'm assuming a lot of people saw it, and it, it's just going to be something that people are less likely to miss. So many other of these instances are, are being stolen from tiny little demo reels and, and student projects and things that you would think that no one maybe ever catches on to. But this is huge. This is like a major studio movie production. How did you think no one would catch this one? I don't know how to direct people towards a property like this because it's a, a major studio, like I said. It just kind of sets the bar of the shamelessness of, of theft that's on display here. It does appear to some extent we can specifically credit the animator Porgoshi. I don't know how much specifically can be placed on them, but it's a good place to start while showering praise. I think the first specific clip that I actually saw that was part of whatever Twitter thread that drew my attention to the story came from BBWB Animation. The stolen clip comes from Oleg Kostinin's short Last Word. It's a fake trailer made for an action-oriented piece filled with monsters and cybernetics, cool sci-fi elements, there's a lot going on there, and it's just packed with style. I sound cool when I say that. Also, it's filled with action. Did I mention all the action that's in it? It's a lot. Oleg is top tier in their ability to animate motion. I really appreciate as an animator how he understands reality and how it can be warped to emphasize those actions. The stretching and distortion really highlights the highs and lows of a particular movement. Watching his characters run, roll, and tumble through the landscapes with constant perspective shifts is really enthralling. Oleg also has a YouTube channel, and if you watch some of the clips on there, it really highlights his, his talents, his attention to detail, as well as a video that actually demonstrates a good way to reference someone else's work while creating something original. In this Spider-Man clip, he took the swinging Spidey from Disney's own animated show and redid it in a way that doesn't look quite so janky. I know studios need to save money somewhere, but maybe not in the opening sequence where people are going to see it every time they tune in. This is a really specific example where you're going one to one Spider-Man to Spider-Man, but you can also look at existing pieces of animation and think to yourself, I kind of like the way he grabbed the ledge when he landed. I like the way his body swung into the movement when he took off. You can look at these things and be inspired and think of how you would tie that in to your own creation while making something original. The frame by frame retracing stuff. No bueno. 
Another clip comes from the show FLCL, Fooly Cooly. Kind of like Steven Universe, it's, it's hard for me to give specific credit to a single artist or a, a group, but I can at least draw attention to the show that this is coming from. In the original shot, a character is running down the barrel of a giant gun, and when the shell is ejected, they're able to ride that upwards. It's kind of part of the recurring theme that all of these actions are just randomly strung together with no real motivation. Knowing now that they were taken from other works, it makes a lot more sense how things are just totally random in this animation, in a way that doesn't really have anything to do with PlayStation games. It's just a string of cool looking moments. This guy is greasy enough that he's even stealing from students. People are pulling all-nighters, subsisting themselves off of instant ramen, probably don't even have a foot in the door yet for a career, and they're already getting stolen from. Gobla is one of the world's premier schools of digital communication, interactive design, and entertainment. For nearly 50 years, they've been shaping young minds who will pioneer the future of animation, photography, graphic and motion design, as well as game development. I feel like I can't really highlight specific artists here because they're still in the midst of creating their portfolios and, and honing in their own own styles. I'm sure many of them do have social media where they share a lot of this stuff, but in the interest of time, considering this guy took from like a dozen of these students, I kind of have to share it as like a collective. Not content in simply ripping off completed works, Kevin started dipping into animation reels, special effects demos, and practice exercises from Gobla in an effort to screw over literally everyone who isn't him. A huge shout out to Insum, a student from Gobla who was able to put together a very comprehensive look at what was stolen from who at their school. The work that they specifically put in to piece all this together is very admirable. I think there's some cool like school pride on display there in addition to simply sticking up for fellow animators. It was a really awesome thing that you did for your fellow peers and students. I hope that there's some level of recognition there within the school that people realize how much effort it would have taken to put that list together. And if somehow they're unable to say it themselves and I'm saying it now, that was really awesome. If, if I were one of those students who was taken advantage of in that way, I would want to know that someone was there in my corner like that. So that's, that's really incredible. Now these various short films are legally the right of the school that they were produced under. So more so than it is for these independent artists, there's a real chance that Goblin will seek compensation. They're just most likely to have the means to actually do something about it monetarily. So hopefully some good can come of that and fund these bright young minds at the expense of a, a loser. We have Loon of Atlantis's Moonlight animated by Suve Tenzan. I won't pretend for a second that I'm capable of accurately pronouncing French words that should have been apparent a minute ago from the Goblins school. They're a collective of 12 animators who actually graduated from Goblin themselves. Being a collective, the group obviously has a wide range of styles pulling from the skill sets of a multitude of talented artists, but looking through some of their work, they really seem to specialize in surrealism and otherworldly settings. Drawing real life in a beautiful way is always a joy, but there's something that I personally love about the escapism of watching someone create from nothing. It's like they get to share their imagination directly with you. They, they get to shape whatever weird idea it is in their mind that they've concocted, and then they get to open up and let you in on that. The fluidity, creativity, and abstractness of their work really shows their unwillingness to cut corners. By that checklist alone, this group of animators almost acts as Kevin's antithesis. It gives me hope that even when there's a predatory artist out there like this, there are still these talented individuals and groups who can overcome that sort of robbery. Kevin chopped up and utilized multiple parts of this music video in a way that doesn't flow as naturally as the original video. You can even notice a moment here where there's no natural way to cut between these two moments, and so the character just kind of pops out of existence. That sort of sloppy shit doesn't happen when you're actually mapping out your own actions and planning things rather than just cutting and pasting from other sources. Even going down to the tiny intro segment, this little cat in the corner, that tiny little chunk of animation, stolen. That makes me assume that like the majority of everything that we're seeing here was lifted from somewhere else to at least some small degree, and it's just an impossible task to sort out specifically where all of this came from. Even though it's a small tiny moment, we still need to give credit where credit's due. This one comes from Thea Glad. But hey, if this guy considered Thea's work to be good enough to, to bother ripping off for that tiny little cat in the corner, 
then that means it's also good enough for us to dive deeper into. Thea graduated with first class honors in illustration and animation from Kingston University. Thea has a strong adaptability, able to work in a variety of styles, always with an emphasis on emotive movements. From a simple walk cycle or a short glimpse of a character, we're always able to learn something about that character from even just a brief glimpse. Seeing as she has a background as an illustrator, she can effectively communicate emotions and movement in as little as one frame, give her more and more of a runway to work with, and the more that she can really strut her stuff. Once people started to catch on to this guy's little scam he was running, they started to think, well, it's unlikely that he would suddenly break bad on this big project, there's a good chance he's been doing this to build his entire portfolio. And sure enough, as you go back, the guy has years of history stealing things all over the place, like, a, like an addict. I guess the more you get away with it, the more it builds up your confidence to keep doing it until suddenly you're in a pretty prolific position, but realize that you also are a talentless hack. I hear imposter syndrome brought up a lot in conversations these days. Unless you're this guy, you're probably doing all right. This is the, this is like the picture next to the face in the dictionary of imposter syndrome. Kevin's relatively recent short for Adfest, Tomorrow Today, borrows quite heavily from Alex Grigg. I haven't seen a lot of specific comments from many of these artists. Alex did chime in on the subject, and I thought it was a cool quote worth sharing. Kind of shows what a cool, level-headed, understanding guy he can be, definitely not quick to anger. This stuff doesn't stress me out. Any artist willing to wholesale rip me off isn't really a peer or someone I can fully understand. I kind of feel sad that they're trapped in whatever headspace that brought them to that point. I'm less forgiving of companies doing it, though. I can totally appreciate what he's saying there. This guy might have built his career around stealing, and now all of a sudden he's stuck in that position, and it might not have been a choice. It might have been desperation originally, and now he's stuck with it. Alex, you can be the high road cool guy. I'll be the one to say, fuck this Kevin guy. Uh, I can't really empathize with those choices myself. See where they're coming from? Maybe be super chill about it? Nah. Alex is an Australian animator who works as a part of the collective Late Night Work Club. They've worked together on short films like Phantom Limb and Born in a Void, which was specifically lifted from. He's a freelancer who's worked with plenty of companies directing commercials or working alongside larger studios. Alex has actually won a multitude of awards over the years, honoring his bright art, minimalist designs, and blended styles. Further exemplifying the chillness that is Alex Gregg, he currently has this unique ability to blend art and animation in a way that appears to go beyond what most programs and artists are capable of, but rather than completely hoarding this skill, he created a rather lengthy free online tutorial of how to do it yourself using Photoshop to enhance your animations. He's really lifting up others, teaching those animators how to achieve more unique aesthetics of their own. Alex has a strong directorial eye, often favoring a slower pacing to allow the more action-oriented moments to really shine. But even when the scene is slowed down, there are subtle animations that breathe life into those little moments. Really awesome pacing, unique style, and just great dude. Within that individual segment, it's not even the only clip that Kevin borrowed from. Further lending to the idea that this guy is probably stealing at every available second. This shot of the orb-headed people on the train zooming by was taken from the fake cartoon intro for Ricochet Splendid, although in that case they're originally zooming by in a jet. I think it's funny that he's ripping this off and doing it in a substantially worse way. He couldn't draw the expressive emotive faces, or he thought it would be too easy to spot if he did, so everyone got these dumb Mysterio orb heads. Ricochet Splendid comes courtesy of Tu Viente, the Argentinian animation collective. They've been around for over 10 years, being featured in well over 50 animation and film festivals. These guys are going strong and have been for a decade. Some of their more recent work includes a cool blending of cell animation with live action shots, meant for Disney Japan's YouTube channel, and this absolutely insane ad campaign that on its own in still imagery looks very cool, but with this animation that has this Space Jam, Monstars style action, but with the FF instead of the NBA. I wish I could share the music to go along with this, it really enhances the clip. You'll have to go to the, the Vimeo link to watch it for real. It would 100% be copyright striked. It's really awesome to see a group that's been around this long maintaining such a level of success unhindered by the bows of the world. Kevin worked as the director for the Neil Barrick music video New Era. There's a very simple movement where some hands do some like Doctor Strange things. It's like the tiniest little segment, dude, and you could have so easily done this yourself and used it as your own <laughs> reference. That's too much work, too many steps, can't be bothered. I'll just trace over someone else's shit. This man has no shame. The original hand-waving comes courtesy of Delphine Dussab. 
She more commonly goes by Dal Caffeine online. She is an art director and animator who most commonly works on music shows. That's what she had in her profile. When I was translating it to my scripting, I wrote it down as music videos, assuming that that was some sort of lost in translation thing, videos, shows, but going deeper into her catalog, I realized it's much more interesting than simply music videos. She actually creates these incredible, intricate, mesmerizing animated sequences to go along with live performances. She's even worked with big names like Pharrell Williams and Major Lazer. Her art style is vibrant, with what appears to be Mayan influences, with a distinct ability to feel both free-flowing and geometric. There's a cool juxtaposition on display there of how she's able to layer together those concepts, and it feels very dynamic and suits a live stage so well. Minimal action and movement being used in such intricate ways to communicate so much and then being matched up to the beat of the song just adds this incredible energy. Her showreel in general is outstanding, featuring amazing moments where she's translated 2D art to this 3D style with cool parallax tricks and camera movements. Delphine may not be on stage, but she is a rock star. There is a 15 second spot that Kevin made for Abima TV. I believe it's something he made a few years ago, but in the process of everything this guy's ever done being stripped off the internet, I cannot find it anymore. But somehow, in that 15 seconds, he managed to rip off two separate things, at least, as far as we know, from Golden Wolf Studios. Once with their live with YouTube gaming opener, and again for the video Zed featuring Troy Sivan, Paper Cut, The Grey Remix. Golden Wolf is a Emmy award winning studio with offices in both New York and London. They have maybe the most diverse range of mediums of anyone else here on this list, including commercial campaigns, opening titles, music videos, AR filters, VR experiences, and social media campaigns. These guys are heavy hitters. They've worked with Nike, Facebook, Google, Disney, and Adult Swim. Their office also looks like the coolest new $4 sign restaurant in the hip part of your city. Being an international studio with such a large group of animators, they're potentially the group with the most diverse range. They seem to just attract any and all sorts of talent and think of creative ways to utilize that. They don't seem to pigeonhole themselves in one particular genre or medium or anything like that. They're just talented as hell and put out one outstanding piece after another. After listing off all of these different working artists and studios and things like that, I think there's an important note that needs to be made here. Please don't get the impression that any of these people are completely unaffected by this. Maybe their careers are stable enough and they have enough other work that they don't have to worry about it too, too much. But no matter how much success you have in this industry, you still have to fight for new contracts, pull overnighters and crazy hours to make deadlines, and constantly strive for a level of creativity and originality that outdoes what you did the week before. When someone skates in like this and starts picking up contracts, misrepresenting themselves and their talents, standing on the shoulders of the artists that they're competing with, with. You're not only stealing from them in a moral sense and a creative sense, but you're devaluing their work. It's harder for someone legitimate to actually score these jobs. If this con artist can come in and make an original work in the fraction of the time, at a lower cost, he's more likely to get hired, and it's going to hurt the bottom line of all these animators and studios. You're creating something from scratch and actually putting in the hard work, it's going to take a bit longer and cost a bit more. So even if the guy isn't directly lifting from you, even if his stolen work doesn't beat out a contract that you are also applying for, there are further ramifications for the industry at large. And luckily it seems that people recognize the, the threat and the lack of use that someone like this is contributing. I don't think I have to convince anyone here. I had a video on that new enchantment Enchanted Portals game where I talked about inspiration versus ripping someone off. And that was a heated debate in the comments. People were saying, no, it's just inspired by, it's fine. I don't think I have to convince anyone this time around that this is sleazy. So please, follow some of the links I have in the description below. I hope that your main takeaway from this video is more along the lines of inspiration and admiration for, for these true creative people out there, rather than just hate and anger. This guy is having all of his stuff deleted off the internet. Every company that's ever worked with him is deleting everything he worked on, removing his profile from the internet. It's almost genuinely hard to find things he's worked on, which is good. That shit doesn't need to be out there anymore. He's probably never going to get another job animating ever again. His professional reputation is damaged to a degree that he'll have trouble finding work in other industries. And there's a realistic chance he gets sued, if not once, multiple times. So I would say don't give this guy a second thought. He's gone. There's no cancelling to be done. The, the damage has been swift and thorough. Instead, let's share some extra views, likes, follows, subscriptions, Patreon support, what have you, 
to any number of the different artists that I shared here today. Share the love with these talented people who were wronged, but if you choose to go over and, and show your support, please don't treat them like victims. I assume none of them want a pity party brought to their door. Rather than drawing further attention to this and making the conversation all about this guy, whose name I've stopped saying, just share your comments of genuine enjoyment and excitement for the works that they are creating, have created, and have coming up in the future. Then we can just appreciate that glee of the work that they've chosen to share with us without the baggage of this shitty situation. The one good that can come from it is the extra exposure to these artists, so please treat them kindly, don't turn it into some sort of mob situation. Just put out some more uh, positivity and uh, optimism out there, you know? I sincerely apologize to anyone who may have had their work stolen who wasn't featured in this video. If that's the case, I, I just haven't come across the specific examples myself. There's probably many more. Researching this and and uh, filming it and now editing it is <laughs> an exhausting process. This is a very uh, lengthy video to put together. I think I need to take a break here. Uh, I, I'm not going to plug my own stuff. That's not what this video is about. But hopefully I'll, I'll see you again soon.